Now this is some crazy technology right here, everyone. These are the Bouge RV Yuma 200 SIGS solar panels. This thing is crazy, guys. Look how flexible this is at just over six pounds. This thing can be mounted to a lot of different places, but we're gonna get into all the testing today. I have two of these. We're gonna test it into the Bouge RV Flash 300 power station here, see what kind of output these things will produce, as well as some other power stations. And we're gonna give you some different scenarios of how you can use these things and go over all the specs and details. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And if after watching this video, you feel like one of these panels are right for you, then I'll leave affiliate links down below, as well as some coupon codes where you guys can save a few bucks. If you use those links, I will receive a small commission. That's what helps support the channel. But let's go ahead and get into all the details. Whew. Now, when you get these panels, they come in a small box like this rolled up. I highly recommend do not get rid of the box, especially if you're not using the adhesive panels and plan on transporting them. That way you can roll them up and stick them back in the box for transport. And I actually have two panels rolled up in here in, into one box. So you don't have to carry two boxes around. If you have two panels, you can roll both of them up and stick them inside the box here. And you can see how big these 200 watt panels are. A lot taller than me. All right, so now I have one panel in the box on my scale, but I have it teared out at zero pounds. Got one panel on there, 6.1 pounds. So just over six pounds. Gonna remove that. And we're gonna try to weigh a traditional foldable 200 watt panel and see what it weighs. And it weighs 17.4 pounds. Over 10 pound difference between the lightweight SIGS flexible solar panel and the 200 watt folding solar panel. So if you're trying to keep your weight down on something like a canopy or something and wanna throw a solar panel up on it, that's a good option. Cause you could put almost three of these panels on there and be the weight of one traditional 200 watt folding panel. Now for the size of this panel, the width of the 200 watt panel is 27 and an eighth inches wide by 86 and a 16th long. And the screw holes lengthwise from center to center are 27 and a half inches. But the ones on the bottom are slightly longer at about 29 and three quarters inches. And then from side to side widthwise, from center to center, the screw hole is 25 and 13 16 So now I have the Bouge RV Flash 300 charging from both of these solar panels at the same time. I have them ran in parallel into my little backflow preventer thing here through my meter into the power station. Currently, I'm getting 205 watts according to the meter and about 193 according to the display. It's only been charging for about an hour and it's up to 83% already from 0%. And according to my meter, the maximum peak watts was 281 watts, which is pretty good for these panels laying down. Now it is a pretty bright sunny day, not really any clouds in the sky. If these were angled up to the right position to hit the sun perfectly, I'd probably get a lot more output out of these, but laying down flat like this, both of them parallel into that unit. I was getting right around 250 watts on average. I think the wattage input's actually slowing down now because it's getting up a little bit higher on charge rate. It's at 84% right now. Not sure if you guys can see that display or not. Now, a few things about these panels. They are ETFE coated. However, do not do what I did. I actually thought that this was a thin film that was to be removed because it seems to scratch a little bit easily. So I started to remove the film because it was starting to peel up on one corner and then it was really, really hard to get off. I emailed the company and asked them if that was supposed to come off and they said, no, absolutely not. That's the ETFE coating. So. Just be cautious guys, do not remove the coating that is on these panels when you get them. It is not a protective film. It's actually the coating for the panels. And here's the grommet holes here. You have four down each side and they are just small enough to where you could put a screw in there. You wouldn't need any washers or anything. You can run a screw right down in. Now I would have personally liked to see in these just a little bit bigger, at least quarter inch or so. That way, if you wanted to put like a magnet with a quarter inch threaded stud on it through there and then magnetize this panel to something you could and it would just make it a little bit easier to put different types of tie downs on these grommets because they are a little bit small bigger carabiners are actually even too big to go through here so if you wanted to use carabiners to hang this you would have to get smaller ones so just something to keep in mind now a second type of panel that they have is the panel that has the adhesive on the back these do not have the adhesive now you can get the ones with adhesive and mount them down permanently to a camper top 
an RV, whatever you want to secure them to. However, just keep in mind, once you do that, it's gonna be very, very hard to remove these. Now, I would have also liked to have seen maybe a set of adhesive strips down the back of these and have the grommet holes so you have the best of both worlds and you didn't have to decide when purchasing. But what I'm gonna probably do and why I chose the non-adhesive ones is I'm gonna probably put some kind of sticky back Velcro on the back of these, like a heavy duty Velcro, then I could just Velcro them to certain things. But these are very, very versatile and very, very lightweight, flexible, which is very awesome. So if you had a long enough truck bed, you could lay these on the back of the bed. I have a five and a half foot bed on the back of my Ford F-150. They're a little bit too long to put long ways, but you can lay them at least one of them diagonally and it would, it would probably work that way. You could easily screw two by fours to the bottom of these or make a frame out of two by fours and screw these down, which would be a lot less weight than trying to mount a glass panel to a frame. Or you could throw some bungee cords in these holes and bungee cord them to an easy up. Now you could put it like this and actually gain some shading area on the inside when the sun's hitting it on this way. Now this is where the bigger grommets would have been nice so that you could have used tent stakes or something in there. You could always buy the smaller carabiners and then tent stake this side down. Now you will have to watch the wind and this is gonna be hard on your canopy if it's really windy and you don't have a real strong one like this. This thing's so old and on its last leg. Now I have a more heavy duty one that has crossbars under it. It would be better with that one. If I got a big gust of wind this way, it would probably blow the side of this canopy in. So you'd wanna watch that. And another option, if you really wanted to, you could deploy these panels out a window if you really needed to. And you don't have to worry about them getting wet because they are waterproof, but I would watch on a very windy day. You wouldn't wanna do this on a windy day because this thing would be flapping all around. All right, so now we're gonna test this panel on a super cloudy day. You could see the sun's not even showing through at all whatsoever. 200 watt panel plugged into the Bouge RV. It's getting 55 watts. Not sure if you're gonna be able to see that. Hopefully you can. 50 watts of input now, 54. So still getting pretty good input from this panel on this super cloudy day, because face it guys, you're gonna have days like today when you're trying to charge up. So now I'm gonna unplug this panel. I'm gonna plug in the Blue Eddy panel that I have here. This is the Blue Eddy SP200, just for comparison. Now this is actually angled up towards the sun. That one's just laying flat in the yard. So in theory, I should get more output out of this one because it's more pointed towards the sun even though that sun's behind the clouds. We'll let it even out here. And I'm getting 45 watts, 47 watts, 46. Not sure if you can see that, hopefully you can. 40 watts, 47, 45. So as you can see, even though that panel's just laying flat in the yard on a super cloudy day, it's still producing better output on a cloudy day than this panel, which is unbelievable can't believe that that's actually producing more just laying flat. Now, if I had that propped up on a better angle, it might produce even more yet, but very happy with the output of that so far on this super cloudy day. All right, so now with the Bouge RV plugged in, I got part of the center of the panel blocked and I'm still getting 23 watts of input. Getting a little bit mixed results, 26 right now. Now, if I cover the whole center of the panel with the box, I lose a ton of output goes down to four watts and it'll fluctuate up and down sometimes hit 20 back to four but it stays pretty low if you cover a big part of the center of the panel but if you cover part of the end of the panel it still gets good output 43 watts there 42 so as long as you don't have a huge section of the center covered if you have a little bit of the ends or a little bit of one side or the other covered you'll still get good output on it shady day so really good as far as partial shading goes all right so now i got both of the bouge rvs and another 200 watt panel plugged into three different power stations so that we can compare the output now i got the bouge rv sigs panel plugged into the bouge rv flash 300 i'm getting 120 watts 121 I have it plugged into the all powers on the second Bouge RV SIGS panel and I'm getting 138 watts. And then I have the Blue Eddy panel plugged into the EcoFlow River 2 Pro and I'm getting 131 watts. But very, very similar in power. Now, one thing I noticed about these power stations, sometimes they don't 
read exactly right. For example, if I plug this panel into this station, it might read a little differently. So just something to keep in mind. But I was kind of curious of how the output was compared to a traditional folding panel and very, very close. And that's a really good panel, but those are really good as well. All laid down the same uh, orientation there, orientated to the sun the same. So very, very similar output from these things, which is very, very awesome. Now I have one of the SIG panels propped up angling towards the sun and I gained about 40 to 45 watts of output that way and it's outputting now 174 watts from the same panel that was producing about 130 when it was laid flat. Now I have the 200 watt Blue Eddy panel plugged into the same all powers unit just to see the comparison and I'm getting 171 watts so I'm actually getting four more watts of output out of the Bouge RV when they're angled the exact same way as this other 200 watt panel. All right, so now we're gonna do a few different tests with this panel a few different ways. I have it plugged into the Bouge RV Flash 300 currently getting 101 watts. And I think the wattage is starting to drop because the voltage is getting up there. I actually have the second panel plugged in to the EcoFlow and I'm getting 142 watts here. So as you can see, I think the charge rate's starting to go down on the Flash 300 because it's at 68%, 116 watts. So let's reorientate this panel here. If you had it over something like that or something, which you probably wouldn't do unless you had a camper that was shaped that way. And I actually lost a little bit of wattage there. It went from 116 down to 83. Now let's try it on this one. I was just getting 142 watts. Now I'm getting 116 to 118 watts with it orientated like that. So let's try something different here. What if it's like that? <laughs> and it dropped to 20 watts. So not really good that way because the sun is basically almost straight overhead right now. You can see the shadow, so it's not really getting hit too good. And the wind just blew it over. So now what if it's like this, draped over this, the back side's really not getting any sun. A Little bit on the top there is. And it's actually outputting almost 50 watts. So actually not too bad being like that draped up over there for 50 watts of output. So you can see very versatile. You come out this thing many different ways and still get some decent output. But overall, unless this thing is optimally angled exactly towards the sun, you're not gonna get full potential out of these panels. So that's why I kind of wanted the ones with the screw holes where I can change it and move it different ways. Now, if you're mounting this flat to the top of an RV, or a camper or something like that, then yeah, I probably would have got the sticky back ones and it would have just been more convenient and easier. Plus if you park under trees or whatever with your RV, then that could be an issue and you're not gonna be able to take your panel out into the sun to charge your devices. So keep that in mind as well. All right, now I got both of those ran into parallel into the Van Powers power station just to show the maximum output of these panels in parallel today. And I'm getting 255 watts of input with both of these being in parallel so pretty good output and it's very comparable to some of my other panels now a few other things about this solar panel is that it is very very durable you cannot break this thing like you can with a glass panel or even some foldable solar panels this thing is like i said really flexible you can walk on it i've even seen people in some other videos driving a car across these which is really crazy now you can't fold these things but you can see they do flex really really good now the only thing i would say is that that thin uh, etfe coating does seem to scratch a little bit easily like i said i thought it was a thin film protecting the panel at first so you do maybe want to watch that i don't know if this thing will get all scratched up over time if it will reduce the output on it or not but just something to keep in mind. Now for some of the other specs on the panels, the main one that you guys are gonna wanna know is that the open circuit voltage is 31.5 volts and that's really what you wanna watch when plugging this into certain power stations because if you go over your power stations li uh, limit, you could burn things out if it doesn't have over voltage protection. So 31.5 volts on that, make sure your power station will accept that voltage. And the working current on this is 8.02 amps and 25 volts 
when it's collecting the sun, putting that power into your unit. But overall guys, this is some crazy technology in this panel for it being so flexible and foldable. It's just crazy what you can do with these things and the kind of technology that comes out. And one other thing I didn't mention earlier is if you mounted these things to the top of a camper or somewhere and you were driving down the road, very, very minimal wind resistance with them being so thin. So you're not going to lose any mile per gallon driving down the road. If you, these things were stuck to your roof, like you would with a glass panel sticking up with a frame and a mount and things like that. Now this is where this panel would really work well. This is a really, really old 1980 something Bonaire pop-up camper that I've owned now for a few years, but this is where this would be awesome for. You'd put this thing up in the air. You wouldn't have to worry about people walking all over your panel it falling down, it's waterproof, don't have to worry about it. So that's where the sticky back one would really come in handy in my opinion. Or even if you had a teardrop, it'd be nice to roll it up over to the top of that teardrop and mount it on there. So please let me know what you guys thought down below in the comments of this video. And if you like this video, please check out some of my other ones. Please consider subscribing and sticking around for the next one.